everyone and welcome back to the XSP Green Monster Channel. Today I am going to be replacing my Pack 80. So a Pack 80, if you don't know, is an 80 amp battery isolator. It's basically a relay that's rated for 80 amps is the simple of it. You get a power that goes to this one and a power that goes to this one and you have a ground and a turn on. So I have my turn on down here on these switches and I can show you guys that and this controls my alternators but you can also use this from battery to battery. I would say this is probably only rated for up to like 4 gauge, so this isn't really rated for like the big 1 knot connections like I'd use if I want to isolate some of my batteries, but it is a good one. So we'll get right into it here, I'll point you guys down at the console and we'll start taking this apart and we can replace my battery isolator. Also, if you enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up, please subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave a comment down below of a video you guys like to see. I'd like to put out more content that you guys want to see, so please leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Turned over, so here's my center console. Get it all taken apart. So, if you guys can kind of see it, it is right down here, right there. You can see just the very top of it. So, first thing we gotta do is to unscrew the bolts on top. These are 9 16 socket get those off there we go so now I got the bolts off and they're both come with what you can see there so there you go that's what they come with they come with a nut a lock washer and then a washer then there will be two mounting screws or at least that's how I have mine set up and there will be the two little ones. I think I'm going to remove the mounting screws first. This should make my installation a little bit easier. And I just have those mounted with a Phillips head. There we go. I know this guy is probably extremely hard for you guys to see, but it's very simple connections. So this is what I use to mount it. Just two little Phillips head screws. Put those back in there. And then, there you go. Now you guys can see it a little bit better. So this is what I'm working with down there. So then like you can see, I'll explain it a little bit more here. Close it out. So this is, they're both positive terminals. That's very important with this, is that they are both positive terminals. And mine are very messed up, but yes. Both terminals are positive on this. You can see my ground coming in here, and then this wire, this blue wire, runs up into this switch panel. So when I hit this switch, you can hear it click. And this turns on that relay. And that's just simple wiring. I'll drop a wiring diagram and show you guys later once I get back into the apartment. So now we'll just remove 
apparently I really put on there. And like I said, this when it went out, it was causing the, it kind of like fluctuates. So it was causing the alternators to almost like turn on and off in a way. That wasn't exactly what it was doing, but it's what it feels like. You can feel the alternators drag on the engine and then kind of like not drag anymore and then drag and then not drag and then drag and then not drag. So that's what it was causing and that's what kind of told me that something was wrong. So now I'm gonna replace it with a new one. Like I said, this one's very old. I can't, I don't even know how many years I've had this in my car. I think it's been at least, it's been quite a few. Yeah, so there's the old one. You can see how tarnished those top terminals are. So there you go, you can see how tarnished those top terminals are. And they're both loose. Like this one is just like, does not feel very connected or as connected as it should be. And you can see the threads are pretty stripped from me torquing it down too tight. Um, it's just, it's overall beaten up. This was outside the car for quite a while. So, and this is how it's gonna go on, since you guys won't be able to see it, is you're gonna do whatever wire you're doing is gonna go on. So you put your wire on, then you're gonna put on the washer, then the lock washer, and then the nut. And that's what I'm gonna be doing once you guys won't be able to see anymore. God, these threads are just messy now. So same thing, you're gonna do the lug, then washer, lock washer, and then the nut. And with these, it doesn't matter which one's ground and which one's positive on these. So you can do ground on one side and positive on the other side, it doesn't matter, because it's all just into a relay. So you're gonna do the terminal, we'll say this one's ground. So you're gonna do terminal, um, your ring terminal on the ground and washer, washer, lock washer, nut on that one. And the same on the other one. I'll show you guys this with my wires. I'm just putting this one back together so I don't lose anything, even though this one's pretty trashed at this point. So there's that one. And now I have the new one. So you can see how much nicer the new one is. So, get the new one going here. I'm gonna remove all the hardware. All right, so there it is, Bear. So I'm gonna sit this back down there. So, mine's gonna go in this way, and mine kind of loop around. So I'm gonna put the terminal on it, and I'm gonna do, and this is the hardest part, is getting these tiny little washers on this thing. Washer, lock washer, and then nut. Does not want a thread. And like I said also, they make these up to around like 500, eight, 500 amps, I think. So I mean, you can get this for basically any application you need. And this one goes on the other side. If you guys can see that, I'll try and turn a little bit more light. Maybe that helped. Yeah, it looks like that helped a little bit. So then you're gonna do ring terminal on it, washer, lock washer, and then the nut. Again, I apologize, I know you guys can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm just threading this nut on top of all of there. And then I go and tighten these down with a, uh, 5 sixteenths ratchet. Yes, they are very weird sizes. I'm not gonna go too tight with them because I have a nasty habit of over torquing these things. So I'm just gonna do that. And you do want to mount these 
things somewhere stable. Obviously mine's inside the car, so it's very stable, but if you're mounting in the engine bay like I had it, I had it um, just with some self-tappers through my firewall, actually. And I would recommend if you do that, that wherever you do it, the that you sand down the paint because the bottom on this is also a ground, although it's not necessary or required, but it is also a ground on these pack 80s. That's why it's all metal. So if I just line back up the holes here, take my screws, make sure you guys are focused down there. Take my screws, press them down in the hole. Just a little bit. There we go. And I also want to say, I know last time, I think I may have stated it, but how this, I had broken a lot of these. Well, I just got this one from Makita, and this one's actually working very well so far. So I'd highly recommend some of these Makita um, impacts to these. And I'm only using this because this isn't long enough for me to reach all the way down there, so I need a little bit of extension, but I do like this one so far. So this one's just a Makita brand one, and I highly recommend this one. On a side note, it's you guys focus back down there. So now that that is securely mounted, you can see it's not going anywhere. I can take my terminal and go to either one. It doesn't matter which one you go to. There's no like power or ground on these ones or like power side and non-power side. It's just a normally closed relay, essentially. So, ring terminal, then washer, then lock washer, and then nut. And then, you can just take your And you just want to go till these are snug. You don't need to go super tight. These are ones I usually crank down on. I just, I just crank down on it, but just go until they're snug. Till that wire doesn't move around anymore. And that's good there. And I'm going to take my other two wires, which turn on my alternators so like I said these are generally used as battery isolators but they can also be used for just relays that you need a lot of amperage to be able to travel through them so same thing my two lugs washer lock washer and I'm gonna put my nut on here and then I'm just gonna tighten down that nut Kind of hold these so they look a little bit bare. There we go, nice and snug. So now everything's mounted in there. So I will test it. You should be able to hear it click. There you go, nice click there. And I'll just kind of put this in. All right, so I'm gonna turn on the vehicle. There we go, and meters are gonna come on. You see this one over here, see how it's red right now? So that means it's not charging, it's resting at 13.0. I'm gonna turn on the alternators. A little bit of engine draw and right up to 14.6. And see how it's very stable? How that isn't flickering back and forth at all? And even that one down there. So it's resting right at 14.5. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Before this was wavering a ton and this would be going up and down a bunch. So you shut them off, you'll see it's dropping back down now. Shut off the meters. 
and that means it's all working. Turn car back off, get you guys back over here. And we'll put this all back together for you. We'll turn on the LEDs while I do it, why not? There we go, so to put my center console back together, first thing you gotta do is grab all of these connections for the uh, tweeters there in here. All right, so now everything's back and connected and this simply fits right back down in here. Press it down into place and there you go. My console is back together. Shut off the LEDs. Get you guys like over here. All right, so that is that. I will go up into my room and I'll kind of draw out the diagram for this thing so you guys can really see what's going on and then I'll end it for you guys there. Hey everyone, welcome back. So I just got back up to my room, let the camera battery charge for a little bit because it was dying and I drew out some wiring diagrams so I can kind of show you what I was talking about in the car. So here's how I have mine wired. As you can see, I'll try and hold it stable. So this is the pack 80 right here. And then we have the switch I have it wired to, and this is my alternator. So my alternator is a power ground and a signal which goes out to my alternators. This is a constant power, and here's a ground and the signal from the switch. So basically I have a constant power going to whatever the power on my switch is and to one of the terminals on the pack 80. And I have a ground going to one of the terminals on the pack 80 and the ground on my alternator control and the ground on my switch. So when the switch is flipped, power goes through signal cable, flips on this relay, which allows power to travel from the constant power over to my alternator turn on. So this is my specific application of it. This is kind of how they're generally used right here. So you'll have your switch, you'll have battery one and battery two. Obviously the switch will be grounded, the batteries will be grounded, and the pack 80 will be grounded. Then you'll have a constant power here from one of the batteries to one side of the pack 80 and then to the switch, obviously the switch needs power. Then when you flip the switch, it'll turn on this and it'll allow power travel to your secondary battery. So that's how a lot of people use it, just to isolate batteries. That's why it's called battery isolator. So when it's off, they act as separate systems, but when it's on, they act as one system and you can charge it. So you can have this one running your system, have this be off, and then you can play your system. This battery will die, and then you can turn on your car, start charging, and then flip the switch, and it'll start charging this battery as well. And that's basically how it's normally run. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. If you enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys on the next one.